Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Monday, May 6th meeting of the Conway Select Board. This meeting is being recorded live by FCAT and by Zoom on the town website. If for any reason those recordings fail, the meeting will still proceed live and in person here at 5 Academy Hill Road, Town Hall. Um, call the meeting to order. And uh, yeah, since we have since we have people here, if it's okay with everybody, we'll just skip the minutes, warrants, etc., and go to uh, the reason for the season for everybody except for Jim. Sorry. Um, uh, the uh, the the discussion on the town records and um, if, uh, right. That's why you're here too. Yes. yes. Um, so, um, yeah, the uh, the town clerk has asked for a, that a policy be created. It went to the town lawyer. The work product in front of you is the result, and um, you know, we're, we're here to listen and to um, adopt the policy if it's you know, hope. hope. Yeah, the, the one thing that is clear to me is that we're at where we're at through a series of misunderstandings and everybody everybody involved like are really good people and didn't do anything wrong and um, but there's mis there there has been miscommunications and um, not really not really the fault of anybody here or anybody in particular nobody meant for there to be miscommunications um, <laughs> Because I don't know. I'm not just, I, I don't, it, not you either, Julia. Um, but, uh, yeah, but um, so, so the thinking is that a policy that delineates the keeping of the records and the storage of the records would be a good thing to prevent future misunderstandings and miscommunications. So, um, I know, other than that, who wants to start? Um, I don't know what else to say. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, since this is basically the town's proposal for but the, the town... The town clerk? The town clerk's proposal. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what does the historical commission... Well, the only to? thing, you know, I'm new, and um, I was reading... In the general laws, in Massachusetts general laws, the, the commission is for the preservation, protection, and development of historical <laughs> spider. Um, you know, we're here to keep these records, and that's why we were a commission, and why we had to have our backgrounds checked and went through the whole ethics test and all that. So I'm not understanding <coughs> what actually is the problem here. Because the law dictates that the custodian of the records, which is the town clerk's office, have possession and protect the, re but, the documents of the town. But does, not, that, does that mean you don't let the historic commission? I've in? never not let the historic commission in the vault to research. Never have I stopped access. I'm just asking. Yeah, yeah. I have never. Yeah. So basically, it means that if you're not here, we can't access it, though? Is that? I'm here four out of five days a week, usually more, but minimum four days. Okay. Isn't the primary issue the removal of the records from the building? They were removed from the vault and put upstairs. Okay. So they were removed from a fireproof. Without letting you know. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But, you know, what Lee we... does not have the authority right. to tell people to remove records that are under the town clerk. And Her records, I don't care. And I, I just want to be careful with this, like, this, because what we have subsequently learned, though, is that Lee was, the, the administrative assessor was in the room when they removed records and they removed records with the permission of the administrative assessor although the administrative assessor wasn't super aware of what they were removing exactly and then the administrative assessor you know the, so so the, 
Sorry, what was the last thing you said? That the, the administrator assessor was not super aware of exactly what was being removed, like by like on a document by document, case by case basis. Is right? that um, something she said? Mm -hmm. She didn't say anything of that kind to us. To what? Just one minute. Is that something she wrote, uh, reported on, or said? I haven't heard that from her. That she um, wasn't aware of what they were doing. On like a document by document basis yeah. or a book by book basis? That was my understanding from what I have heard she said. I see. So okay. I don't know. I, she didn't speak to me directly about this. But you know, she said she was working on her computer. People were going in and out of the vault behind her, and she really wasn't paying attention to what was being taken out. Okay. Well, I um, was um, there. We are happy to, to say um, what we witnessed and what we heard, too. Yeah, yeah it, it was a box that had, it was all wet, and you know the cardboard was compromised. And I actually don't know what the records were, but they were well, his historic records. Yeah, there's more than that box, though. The leather-bound, the leather-bound books that mm. are oh, that. Oh no, I didn't. We didn't take any. Books. They went from the shelves in there to the closet upstairs that day. I don't know who did, but the cemetery oh. the cemetery <laughs> box, the box of annual reports, and the leather-bound books that are in there. Those were all. Those all fall under the town clerk's office, uh -huh. and those were all removed that day. W were you there? You oh yeah. Was um, that after I left or something? No. Um, let me. I'll, I'm happy to tell you okay. exactly what what we did. Um, but first, let me make sure I'm not I'm not uh, talking about the wrong thing. We're discussing the policy, right? The um, I'm looking at the. So was invited to comment on the new policy that was posted on Thursday. There's a and there was revisions this morning, right? Yes. And if you like an hour before I left the house I, I found there's another policy. Oh yes. And they two don't look alike at all. Oh. Is that different Correct. thing? I just want the one you have in your left hand was reviewed by town council. Was and the, the one that was sent that out was to me was sent to town council. And, and the, her you. edited versions in your left yes. hand. So the one you should focus on is the one in your left hand. Oh, got it. Okay. They look very, very different. Um, so over, I see. So over the weekend, uh, there was feedback from town council that this is a wrong policy or it's not, not wrong. It was like, just not good. The issue with developing a policy at all. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem is that this is all law. This is all statute, Massachusetts statute. Mm -hmm. And there are about 300 pages worth of statutes. So right. to be frank, town council first said, you don't need a policy because it's all in the law. Mm -hmm. But we wanted to be very clear. That was the direction from um, Phil, to be very clear about what the policy was going to be. Therefore, she took the draft and said, OK, well, if you're going to have a policy, this is what it should stay. Okay. So we will check. Um, all right, we'll check this one and we'll talk about this one. Then, um, okay. Since it was revised so drastically over the weekend, wouldn't it be prudent to maybe give it a couple more days <coughs> to mature so it, before voting on it? It's, but it's law. It's just paraphrasing small portions of a 300-page document that is law. So it's, there's really not, we can't go against what the law tells us to do. Of course not. And that's all that is. Hmm. It's just little bits and pieces of I think it might be best to, to hear the concerns um, around this discussion i mean from the town clerk's perspective um, if you're in yep. charge of something of course you want to know the ins and out of everything you're in charge of so i can totally understand that perspective of saying you know files were removed that she didn't have um the information on um and were approved to be moved by somebody who wasn't approved to right allow the move and they, right. are, they are all public records so now they're in a place where if I have someone looking for information I don't right. have it in and then we've spoken about how there's no restrictions to the documents that 
you know, the clerk is typically here four days out of the week. Um, I would hope that it'd be a rare case that you wouldn't be able to schedule, you know, at least 24 hours in advance to see the documents. They don't even have to schedule. If it's starting I'm just saying, hours, right? Yeah, I mean, like, how many, how many times is it going to happen where somebody's going to need to see documents like that without, you know, giving you notice? So I, I guess after those two basic things and this basic document, which is all based on Massachusetts general law, what are the concerns? Right. Hang on. All right. Well, let me um, state for the record. Um, so my name is Julia Stone. I'm a member of um, Conway Historical Commission, but I'm here in my um, personal capacity because um, since um, since um, the agenda was posted on Thursday, the commission didn't have time to gather quorum and uh, deliberate on the town matter. On the town matter, and we're not allowed to do that without quorum and without the posting, which would have to be on Thursday. To, for us to have anything in deliberation by today. So I'm just, uh, me, personally. But, uh, so if, if, but i here to listen, to ask questions, uh, to, to explain the, uh, to dissuade everybody's concerns, and um, to take what I hear to our commission meeting, which is, a, which has been scheduled for a little later this week. So um, I'll make sure that all the members will, will have the information from, from this meeting too. So um, as a member of Historical Commission, I am naturally very familiar with records retention law. And the um, commission has been a long time advocate for strict adherence to it. And uh, I really welcome any effort by this board to make sure other town departments and boards and offices follow the retention law and raise awareness about um, the law and uh, the related procedures. It seems to me that from the records itemized here in this draft, and it looks like there's been more added, but um, from what I see, it seems to me that the itemized later letters, the, uh, the, let me just try not to trip over my own time. <coughs> the items uh, listed in the new policy are the ones that are supposed to be maintained by town clerk. That's some, <coughs> that's why it says these are some, but not, it, 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 there are many, but not limited to. There's more than this. This is just a small portion. Right, the town clerk might maintains a lot more. These are the listed here, but all of these that are listed are under mm -hmm. your um, custody. Mm -hmm. Yes. So those, as far as I know, to the best of my knowledge, are already in the fireproof vault. Mm -hmm. And uh, the commission, by the way, except for maybe the meeting minutes, the retention schedule. <laughs> um, I'll check, I don't remember. It, it does, uh, not necessarily the historical commission meeting minutes, but there are old select board meeting minutes and old Correct. school report meeting minutes, and they're all leather bound, handwritten old journals. And those are the historically significant records. And, and it's, um, it, it's an aside. It's just uh, this is something I <coughs> read in the law that I, I'm not quite sure which category of historical significance li records this one goes to. There are five categories here in the policy. The files and subject files, the do project files, the public relation files, the publications, which are printed material, and the audio or video. Mm -hmm. And those are just a few of a whole lot um, more. And they're listed here in detail with examples. So as an aside, but the, those historic meeting minutes, which category do they fall under? They fall under open meeting law meeting minutes 01.074, which isn't included on that list because the list is just pieces of, it's not inclusive but they're under 01.074, which is open meeting law, meeting minutes, 073, meeting agendas, 075, meeting notices. I see. Okay, so under current uh, records, not historically significant records then? No, this is permanent. Includes well, a final yes. record. Yeah, they're, they're it's, all it's permanent. permanent. So that means all meeting minutes. Okay. All right, so meeting minutes fall under the meeting minutes category, but not the historical significance, got it. Um, 
That's fine. Sorry, that was a distraction. Um, we didn't remove those. We didn't touch those. Um, we specifically um, asked what we could remove. Well, no, we, we informed Lee that, um, should I tell the whole story like from the beginning? How we noticed. Well, I know uh, that there are some units <coughs> up there in the leather bound books. I know that they're all the annual reports got moved up, and those are also part mm -hmm. of the retention schedule under the town clerk's office. Um, and, town report? and the cemetery box also. Yes. All right. Oh, let, let's, let's get to. Let's so, Hans, that's the question. Everything over. that was moved is still upstairs. Mm -hmm. You still don't have it. Yes, back. because I wasn't going to just go up. Right. Yeah. I, I didn't okay. feel right. right doing that. Okay. Um, I'll address this, the, cem the cemetery and uh, the town reports is the, the, the book, the publication, the booklet, mm -hmm. those the mm -hmm. for 70s, all right. Mm -hmm. I know that the, okay. And that you'll see the annual reports are right on the front page of the policy as an example of one of the. All right. annual, so, I mean, okay, I'm, I'm, annual reports. I see those. Um, just to understand, those are not his. his well, they are historical significant, but they're from the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Okay, so um, we were having. I all all I have to have a minimum of one copy of all the annual reports going all the way back to when annual reports started. All right, I'll I'll. I'll make sure to see if they're there, then um, they're there. All right. Thanks. So I think the summary is like Phil stated before, is everybody was just trying to do the right thing, yeah. um, right? Okay. And that's <laughs> what's not a summary. The summary is um, when when we were having a meeting and, and came to ask Lee a question, there was musty smell. Right. Um, you, pr you probably mentioned that too. So there was immediate concern about mold and water. And I believe Lee, on, we encourage Lee to let people know that that's what's happening. And I believe uh, she sent you all of you a message. Yeah, we're all aware of the whole history of this, yes. So you're aware that the water is seeping for the wall? That well, there's, there's an update to that, but yes, we're aware that there's phosphorescence inside there and it looked like people were concerned about mold. Yes. And I know records were taken out to help preserve them because people were worried right. that they would be damaged. Of course. So it was all on good intention. I think the only thing we're trying to get to is just to say that records should not be removed without the clerk's approval, okay. right? That's it. That's absolutely. really what it comes down to. Oh, um, we absolutely agree. If we accidentally uh, remove the town reports, uh, those publications will, we will have to return them because we can't take them. Even though um, what concerns me is the condition, how, how the tests have been done. Um, I was expecting an update. I, I, I believe uh, there was something in the schedule. Yes, we had. Um, can can uh, I go print that document while you talk? <coughs> you know which one I'm talking about. The the one that I, that MGL about places, sure. not items. Sure, sure. I have. Um, so, yes, I reached out to the Department of Public Health, the indoor air quality, and we had a gentleman named Mike Feeney who came out here on Friday afternoon. Um, he met with Ron Sweet, with Lori, with myself, and with Phil, and sat, he sat down and, I mean, this is a gentleman who goes all across the state dealing with this issue in buildings everywhere, public buildings. The first thing he said is we don't have water seeping in, and the issue that comes up is dew point, and this was interesting to me because I hadn't realized with a building like this, with the concrete, you can have the temperature gradients, it depends on how much humidity you have inside. And if you have the dew point happening because of the temperature gradient and the humidity, you're going to get moisture on your... So that was definitely <coughs> happening. There were only three boxes that I'm aware of that were affected. They were up against the outside wall. Everything else is fine. There was no mold. Everything else is fine. Oh, so that's such a relief. Yeah. Do you have a report from him? He hasn't he, given he, us the report he, he yet. He said it will take a couple of weeks for him to, gen to generate. Yeah. And, and, and know, we'll share that with you all when you wonderful. Know. Yeah. I, I was called when he had arrived already, so I hurried up to get down, and I was not able to alert anybody else to come to that okay. meeting. Um, but, you know, he, he, he did have his measuring devices, and 
I know his work because he, he did the school, uh, the Frontier School Administration building on Christian Lane before we sold that, and that was it. That was a huge problem, similar. And basically, the the problem is is the outside of the building, the masonry right at the bottom of the building needs to be freshened up a little. I'll just say, it's and been um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, and um, and that. That led to not seepage of water, but a more mi mo more moisture coming in than would have, would have otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, plus just the general fact that our New England <coughs> weather has turned warmer and wetter and more humid um, that it, than it used to be, and that the building was formerly accustomed to. But um, he, his his. His initial assessment would be that it was that the uh, 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 a nice sized dehumidifier with the drainage going through the wall to the room on the other side of that, um, um, you know, it would you know, it would just it might be that that's just would, would do the trick. Okay. So, um, you know, so on, on his work, we have oral confirmation that there is no mold. Except on a few of the papers themselves. That's what, and he said there was some efflorescence. So I think everybody was very upset because we, and I smelled it myself. We, you could go in there and it hit you. You could tell that there was an issue. Again, the problem was that Lori's in charge of those records and they were taken without her knowledge and removed. And they're <coughs> legally, they're all supposed to be in a fireproof vault. So they're actually more vulnerable right now than they were before. In the in the fireproof vault. So this is the issue at the question. Mold grows on organic material like yeah. paper, so Hard it needs skin. to be missed. Yeah. And mold grows very fast. Mm -hmm. And those documents there that are still in the vault, that are in the custody of town clerk, they what happens when if they get molded to? Because did I understand you correctly? There's still concern about humidity in the air. Okay. Well. Lori had gotten what ten thousand dollars? I'd gotten fourteen thousand dollars. <coughs> I'd used ten so far to purchase the archival binders and the polyester sleeves to protect the records. Okay. Uh, and does it, you were at I believe you were at the town meeting. I was. Sure. Um do those boxes protect the papers from mold? Yes. Yeah. Even when the humidity is uh, um Higher the archival them. boxes are made, the, the boxes and the binders are made to protect the documents inside from the moisture in the air, the dirt in the air, the anything okay. in the air. Right. Has uh, the boxes been purchased here? Yes. Wonderful. Um, okay. When uh, when we were in the vault last time, the, the records were still, you know, on the shelf, stacked on the shelf, and uh, I don't know if they still are. I had okay. pulled the records that had gotten damaged off of the shelves and moved them to the other side of the vault. There are still some on the top shelf. I had pulled all the bottom ones out. The bottom ones, yes. I saw those were already out. And yeah. that was the only shelf that had any damage. Wonderful. Um, if the mold was on some papers, um, I'm concerned if there's a risk that it will be spreading to other papers that are mm -hmm. stacked there and not in boxes. No, mm -hmm. you don't think so? No. No, I did not get that impression from Mike. Did you? Yeah, he, he, he you know, he, he did say that, you know, you, you want to address this sooner rather than later, and um, but that it's so it's a solvable problem, you know, and that it's nothing. It's it's not going to, you know, ruin everything that's in there, etc. But you know, we do we we do. He he isn't. And those were his initial assessments after a brief walkthrough. He then spent, I don't know how long, a couple hours at least, doing all of the <coughs> measurements at every little thing, his dew point this and that, and he had all these little, he had actually a couple of really cool handheld devices with like Star, Star Trek tricorders and stuff. Um, but uh, he, he, he uh, you know, and, and he will be generating a report that I, I you know, so, so we, we, I think, I, I, I think that when you go in there and you smell what it smells like, it's like, yeah, this isn't good. It's scary. Um, um, and that these are important documents and that they ought not to be ruined. Yeah, my, like that, my concern is that, um, you know, this is, this is all great conversation because all of us just want to preserve the records and make sure that the records stay, um, are, aren't damaged. But my concern is that for mold to to um, spread, uh, it has to be done by air, right? Disposals have to be done by air. So any movement 
that is done. If you're picking up documents or you're walking in, that is more, that does more damage than just leaving them as is because you're spreading it through the, the spores through the air and that's mm -hmm. how mold spreads. Mm -hmm. oh. Plus they're yes. not the fireproof mold anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And the mold's being used uh, for access to public records so it will be opened and that people will be in there receiving records. I will be in there retrieving records. That person will be there right. retrieving records. Yes. Yeah, we have to keep it to a minimum for sure. Have to keep it to a minimum because the more people in there and the more people moving the records, oh. the worse it's going to get. Yes, um, that does not sound very reassuring. You know, we we all had the, like our basement. If there is a stack of uh, notebooks or papers, and then in a couple of weeks they could be all fuzzy and covered in mold in in a wet corner. If it's a moist area, which we we just heard that it is. Right. So we had them come in and do the dew points, and then what? In all honesty, that was true throughout this whole right. building. They're no safer up there than they are in the vault. Oh, it's not. And that that is. Um, <laughs> My Except the vault's fireproof. Right. No. Except the vault is fireproof, yeah. and legally they're supposed to be in a fireproof <laughs> vault. So right now we are not being legal. True. The, the commission has been lobbying for the space in the vault forever, and uh, we don't. It, there is it is humid up there in summer. It will it will get um, also not ideal, not perfect for storage documents. That's not an appropriate storage upstairs, and would like to um, put them somewhere safe and secure as uh, that's what we're supposed to do with the records. Um, the moisture, though, the humidity level, especially with the water damage, it is not safe to secure right now. We, um, you, some of you who have been here maybe remember about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, we tried to lobby for, for a bold space, for a bigger, bigger space. And we're still working, so we'll probably bring it up again. The only problem um, is we've got Four, four or five departments on top of town departments that use that vault. You've exactly. got the assessors, the town clerk, the elections, the board of registrars, the board of health. Are exactly, our, exactly. So there's, there's not enough space. There's not. And, so I, I hope. As, as I recall a, that request, that was for a multi hundred thousand dollar request that included a museum space and an exhibit space. Um, and that was just. Well, that's it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but you know, look, the, 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 the thing about this is that the Historical Commission is filled with wonderful people doing wonderful things. You are a wonderful person doing wonderful things. Denise, who's about to leave, is a wonderful person doing wonderful things. Um, but, like, the, 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 it is the town clerk who is the town's records access officer. That is a legal title. And the custodian of the records. That, that, that has a legal responsibility to have the records um, that the town clerk is required to maintain in a fireproof vault. Right. Um, and the statute actually doesn't say anything about mold, but um, but the mold is the mold is very mold's serious, real, and yeah. we don't want we don't want our stuff getting ruined by mold. Um, so like that's, uh, um, so that's why we thought a policy just that that you know isn't it's not like the the policy should cover whatever documents we want to you want to discuss rather than needing to discuss each document or each set of documents um, like, like at, in developing the policy. The policy should be broad enough that it encompasses all the different categories of. All right, uh, fair enough. So um, back to that, uh, to April 12th when we removed the papers, um, we informed Lee that we're removing the ones from the shelves that are clearly labeled historical commission. We took those. Our shelves are the best labeled and organized there. So we removed those. We asked Lee if we could remove the, the old valuations, so which technically in the custody of assessors. Um, just um, to remind you that uh, with section uh, six of uh, general law, six, um, chapter 66, and then section seven, they are listing who, is, uh, who can be a custodian, and, which is an agency, and I believe the board, the board's committees, commissions, they all fall under agency or the, and they can be custodians. We know that, um, for example, school board documents are not in the vault. We know that uh, cemetery um, 
commission papers, documents are not involved? They were. There was a box of them. Oh. They're upstairs now. Right. Those ones, uh, to the best of my knowledge, are the Senator Association, which is a private organization, which is not part of town records. The ones that uh, I'm not aware, well, I only have um, stored from what people told me, because it was before my time, that the records built relating to the cemetery commission have been removed from there about 10 years or so. And, but that, that box was, um, to my knowledge, is the cemetery association, which is a private organization. And uh, Peter Freisen, who is the cemetery commission member, is uh, working with us on uh, so making sure that that's what it is. One thing I just wanted to point out is that these are all town records. Everybody in town who wishes to should have access to them. Mm -hmm. Correct. The only way that can happen is if they're in one central location with a records access officer who can then give access to them. So if there are records that are up there which the public might be interested in, the public therefore has no access to them. So I just wanted to... So, and I, I'm just trying to understand, is, is the Historical Commission willing to return any of the documents that were taken, or of course they are. is your position, well, it sounds like you're saying that, like, the vault's not safe. Um, we, I, it seems we They're all agree that the vault is either. not safe. It's not safe there, up there either. It, they need prop, prop, safe secure space, right. absolutely. Yeah. But, and, uh, if you tell me, to return the documents and put them there where it's not safe for the higher humidity, I will have to do that. However, I just want to make a note. Um, I had uh, a list here of the um, town records um, officer duties, responsibilities, who contacts other custodians to, to retrieve the documents and to give um, access to the public which to me clearly law says that they are not all records in the custody of sole one person. Other departments are proper custodians of the, of the records. It's not exclusively town clerk. No, the tax collector has tax collector records, the town administrator has town administrator <coughs> records, but it can't be the historical commission has a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this because it's not under the custodian of its department or me, or it, my agreed, office. Agreed. We do not claim, um, the commission doesn't claim ownership or even custody of those records. We have a retention schedule here, and uh, under historical commission, it has district maps, historic map, preservation plans, map, historic resource survey, maps. Um, those are the ones that are in our custody formally. My point is that we were very careful to remove only the records that do not, uh, are not listed as being solely in the custody of a town clerk. We were very sure that um, I did ask Lee about something that the town meeting records because those are 18th century books, they're brittle paper. I asked Lee, could we take it? Lee said, absolutely not. Those are under the maintenance town clerk, you cannot touch them. And we didn't, and they're still there. We haven't touched anything that is listed so as being under um, the purview right. of the town clerk. Now, a lot of but the departments, <coughs> just, just for a little bit of history, a lot of the departments prefer not to be the custodian of their minutes and their agendas. That's why they were in the vault. Fine. That, that's, but that that's why they were in here under the town clerk, because the, a good majority of them give all their minutes. Can we have office. a compromise? Do you think if, we, if we point. took the if, point. if we took the documents and put them in a plastic, a sealed plastic bin, and threw some silica packs in there? Um, yeah, well, that's old. that's creative, and it might work. I have um, plastic totes under my desk. Yeah, like I mean that I, I've had a mold problem at my own house, and that was something that the specialist told us that we could do. Mm -hmm. That that is probably a good idea. I'd like to hear more about it. My point was, that was an excellent point, maybe the policy, um, maybe other departments should also be able to review the policy and given a chance to contribute to that policy in terms of town records. 
but um, just to clarify the situation, so the commission has not removed anything that was under the purview of the town clerk, which means official town record. We removed uh, records that um, technically may belong to other departments, and uh, we explicitly asked permission from the assessor to remove those, and we're given that permission, as uh, I believe you uh, found out. We. Um, We are storing them there temporarily. We wish there was better space. I don't want them to be there come <laughs> summer and come flood and humidity. They shouldn't be there. So I, I do hope that the vault gets fixed by that time. And uh, we hope so, so all the records can return. Mm -hmm. yeah. In all honesty, I, we were not told that anything had to be removed from the vault, that it was actually in danger. So, and the humidity, as I said, I don't think his readings were much different throughout the entire building. On top of which, those records are now vulnerable to fire. So in my mind anyway, it's much safer to put them right all back into the vault where they were because that's much safer than leaving them um, Possibly. And um, I'm happy to, um, to, to read the report from the expert, and absolutely. We'll do that. So we won't have that for two weeks, and during those two weeks, you basically don't have access to the records that you're legally obligated to, to have, have access, access to. to. And 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 just to make a point, if a department turns over custody of their minutes to the town clerk's office, then that does make me the legal custodian of those minutes. And the majority of the departments and commissions outside of the treasurer, the accountant, and the town administrator have and the historical commission keeps their own minutes no actually i do i do have minutes for the historical commission they get sent to me yes yeah, for yeah. keeping absolutely we make sure to send copies uh, so i i mean it's even if they did at one point they were turned over to the town clerk's okay. office oh, let, let me ask about erica's question do you have access to that space right now i you know <laughs> I do if I have, need to lock up my own office and make people wait while I go looking around and digging through a closet where I don't know where anything is trying to find what I'm looking for. I mean, in here, I knew where things were, and if someone's sitting at the table, I can go in the vault and get. Yes. Now, I'm sorry, could you wait out in the hallway while I go searching all over your tables and all through your closet trying to find what? I have no idea where it is. Okay. Well, considering that all those are... Um, probably 19th century records and early 20th century. Has um, anybody asked for them? In the past in, in two the weeks, meantime? no. Yeah. And not in the past two weeks, but <coughs> yes, people do. Well, yeah. Okay. And um, it, 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 it doesn't matter. It's, they are, you know, it, that's not the point. The law is what the law is, no matter what we think. Yes, yes, the, the law um, does specify that they need to be safe, um, safe, secure, and accessible. And, fire and in a fireproof Yes, location. and a fireproof world. Yes, I agree. About accessibility, so I'm um, glad to see you do have access to that. Um, the, those that were removed that are historical 19th century records, they stored in the vault, they were not exactly accessible. Um, it was, uh, well, we all know that the vault is overcrowded as, uh, you also said. So the accessibility issue to the, those specific records that were removed, it has not become any worse that sure it has. when they were um, labeled and in the back shelf around the corner in the vault behind the file cabinet. Sure, because I don't have to ask the person to wait in the hallway while I lock up and spend God, who knows how long trying mm -hmm. to find them in a pile on a table mm -hmm. in a closet. Um, I know uh, the clerk has a reasonable time frame for retrieving the records, especially right. if they're not in the immediate custody. And uh, by all means, we're very happy to go and fetch them. Uh, no. I mean, that, you know, the, what, what the policy that is before us is, is about the town, is about the records access officer who is the town clerk. The current town clerk is Lori Lucier. Mm -hmm. um, that that is who makes the decisions about the documents, um, you know, the, the records 
access officer determines what the what the town clerk's required records are. The law lists what the town clerk's uh, purview is. Right. Yes. It's uh, and it, it's, it's not a discretion. It's the, in in any type of interpretation of any statute, there is some amount of interpretation and discretion because no statute is a million pages long that can cover in every possible eventuality. That is why we list a records access officer to make those determinations. And there is always an appeal process through the select board, and we have a town council that can weigh in on what's record is what's record. But if if the records access officer says this record needs to be in this location, then that's uh, where that's where it needs to be. Okay, I'll, I'll probably quote him from memory. I um, don't know if I have a copy, but uh, the clerk, or, no, the records officer, collaborates with other departments with other custodians when the right. records are needed, which tells me the clerk contacts another custodian and gets them those brought if they're not on location. But what the law requires in, is that it be in a fireproof mm -hmm. vault. So we only have one of those in this building, and that is in that room. I understand. So um, everywhere else that the, that the clerk's records are at is out of compliance, even though the vault is crowded, okay. moldy, um, yes. and not the most ideal of all uh, you know, of, of all vaults, but we're working on that, and we, it, the, we, you know, we recently got it, the, the problem diagnosed, we're getting a written report, we're getting a dehumidifier, we're getting it worked on, um, but in, in the meantime, the, it is a, the, the vault, records stored in the vault might get a little bit funky, but records stored in a closet might get burned to crisp. We've had that so, happen like, once already. It's not like this place has ever burned, <coughs> burned yeah, down before. Never burned yeah. down before. <laughs> Since 1950. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's like that's what that's why we're being asked to do this in a somewhat not emergent basis. Like you know, the, the town clerk wanted us to do this last week. I wanted to hold this hold off to give the historical commission a chance to weigh in um, because you know I I value the work that you got that you all do and. Um, and, and, and I also know that we're at this place because of a series of misunderstandings, not because anybody's a bad person or did a bad thing. It was just the way that the communication has functioned it has not been ideal for, um, so, so trying to sort of reset the relationship and trying to, um, you know, hopefully it, it, it can work going forward. Where, I mean, can the, of all the town employees, the town clerk is the one, the posted hours, the town clerk, in my experience, has always been here during the posted hours that the town clerk is supposed to be here. I've never tried to come and visit the town clerk when it was supposed to be open and she hasn't been here. Right. So, Except did you I had COVID. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you say, Bill, um, you're putting a hum dehumidifier in the vault? Yes. Yes. Dehumidifier. Dehumidifier. A dehumidifier in the vault with the with the outlets drilled through a hole in the wall to the room next door. One of those two rooms, or the other room. Where there's one of the rooms. It's accessible through it's here. The for boiler room. It's the boiler room the for room. the and drainage. And filled with fire stop, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Chris, how would that affect? Um, we were talking about the cost, no air circulation should right. be there or minimal. Right. With the dehumidifier, isn't doesn't that circulate the air? So uh, what a dehumidifier does is, it, you're correct, it does take out the moisture and then pump out dry, warmer air. Mm -hmm. So actually Troy brought this up to me the other week. So I do have to check with the mitigation, mold mitigation person I'm working with on my personal property to get some advice on how we should work on a closed, bentless. Yeah. Well, our, the, the gentleman from DPH, is he's worked on many vaults before. I think we should wait for his report yeah. before we even yeah. worry about whether it's a dehumidifier or whatever he's going to oh. recommend. 
Okay. Yeah. But but as I said, he didn't raise any alarms when we were there no. that anything yeah. was in imminent danger in that vault okay. at all. That that's very reassuring. And I was but like the, one of the first people to run over here after I heard and take photos mm -hmm. and wonderful. Try to his, his specific recommendation was that he, he recommended that you avoid keeping anything on the ground floor or the lowest shelf right in that back north you know west the south and there's south no, and there's southeast south corner. easterly corner and there's nothing on the floor and the only thing that's on the bottom shelf are records that have a retention period from the elections of 22 months so they're going to get shred anyway all right that's um that's very reassuring good good to know so just want to make myself clear clear that on the day when it smelled like mold, smelled musty, the risk from mold seemed to be uh, more immediate than the risk from potential fire. And uh, we didn't want those documents ruined. That's one. My second point to stay clear, we did not touch or remove any of the records that are in the purview of the town clerk, specifically listed in the law. If uh, those town reports booklets are um, the only copies, we will return them immediately. Um, third point, the um, custodian, and uh, I have here found my printout with the agency, agency who can be a custodian, any agency, executive office, department, board, commission, bureau, divisional, or authority of the Commonwealth that is identified in chapter 66, paragraph 6A, and uh, chapter 4, paragraph 7 and so on and so on, any person, corporate. So we, as a commission, are specifically listed here as an agency that can be a custodian. So we did not, um, we did not uh, defy the law. We did not by taking those in our custody. But there are not in fireproof vaults, so that's defying Correct. the law in itself. Yes, and as I explained my first, uh, my first point, at the time, the immediate situation to us seemed it was more risky um, from, for the records to stay there and risk them being damaged from water. Completely understood. That was fine. That's that, all. Now understood. that it's clarified. I keep trying to say that, you know, that we don't think any of you did anything wrong. We didn't think, and none of you are bad. You didn't make, it. this is just trying to like, okay. for the future, just do something so that like we're not in this place again, and it's. Like, I'm, I'm I, glad. I'm glad to hear that like, reassurance. Like, uh, because uh, the last paragraph of the policy that was sent to me here, um, this is pretty much um, repeats the um, record retention schedule language and the general law and public records language, except for the last paragraph about removing documents. Um, it seems to uh, use a language from the other section of the law that talks about unlawful unlawful possession so um that is why i'm here for that any records that belong to the town clerk right will with the go exception back to the town clerk mm -hmm. with the exception that the word unlawful is not actually typed here but the rest of the language is from that section of the law and i just want to clarify that the possession we took is not unlawful i want to be very clear about that and uh, I'm prepared and we, to support it. We, we did not do the legal research. That is why we have a town attorney that does okay. this sort of thing. Okay. And, um, but, you know, nobody, I certainly never ever meant to imply that he did or the commission did anything unlawful. I'm glad to hear that. And, or, or bad or wrong or in any way. Okay. Um, deserving of appropriate or, uh, you know, uh, punishment. Okay. Um, and, you know, I just want, this is this is just going forward a way just to like to set sort of rules of the road or how you know just how we're going to do things in this building um, and to make it just sort of clear that that we do have a records access officer it is the town clerk and the town clerk is to, decides what the town clerk's records are all right um, let, let me read to you the record access officers that is from Massachusetts, a guide to the Massachusetts public records law that outlines the duties. Um, what I mentioned before. So, there, let, let, so before, before you do that, so um, what, what I'd really like to do is just sort of focus on the proposed 
policy. Right. It's and very pertinent because it, it could change the way you phrase a proposed law. And I mean, and, and, and I guess part, part of this is that, in, in fairness, the revision came out this morning um, at, fr from the lawyer. So, I mean, but this but it is, is from town council. And, and you know, <laughs> and, 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 and so, um, you know, I don't, I don't want the commission to feel like unlistened to or un, un, unloved. Um, you know that that you know that, um, and, and you, with with only a few hours since you all have received this, it is fair to say that they haven't gotten a chance to communicate with each other and to put forward any recommendations for changes in the policy language. Um, but this is sort of what. Like, you know, the feeling is that this is sort of uh, something like this needs to be in place mm -hmm. to, so that we're not in this place having these types of discussions again. And there, there are so many different statutes that are relevant yet, you know, that basically the one that trumps all is that the records have to be in a fireplace vault <laughs> and <laughs> they're not right now. Um, so we're coming up on an hour. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah. we so, have other town things to get to. But if we could just, you know, we appreciate your time. We appreciate the, everything the commission has done, and we appreciate your work in getting the files back. If you have questions um, based on the law, the interpretation of the law, we can send them to Veronique. Veronique can verify with um, town council, and then if the policy needs to be updated based yeah. on what you found, we can have town council do that. Uh, great. I have no questions about the law. The law is pretty clear, and uh, it uh, it instructs the clerk to contact <coughs> other custodians when there's a request for public record. Except the majority of the custodians have turned their records over to me for the purpose okay. of that, That's their prerogative. That's fine. And we'll be happy to, to do this the same. Well, one, I one. mean, if you want to keep custody of historical commission records, that's we, the we, historical we, commission's <coughs> prerogative. Then you, they still but, need to be in a fireproof vault, correct? If they're the only records. If they're the only records, right. but... If there's copies. The old leather-bound books, those are one and onlys, and those weren't th those belong to other commissions that had been turned over to the town clerk's office for safekeeping and for ease of access. Um, and those in that box of annual reports, that's all, that, those are the only annual reports I have in there. So I need to have those back, and again, if there's any duplicates, yeah. I'm happy to give them back to you. Okay. I, but th that's all of them. Okay. Um, well, it, it, it is an aside about annual reports, but that box has a few. It's clearly not a complete set. It's just there's several mm -hmm. booklets well, of them in there. It's. I know, but I need to have at least one copy of everything that's in there. Absolutely. Just that one did not look like the original set, but I'm happy to bring them back right away. Just I think there could be some confusion here. I'm, um, I have no objection to the language. The language is pretty much taken from the law that we follow, except for the last paragraph where it seems to apply that, um, well, it says those records cannot be taken, but I'm trying to, to let you know that we did not take or we did not take custody or possession unlawfully of any records that do belong to, belong, I mean, in the custody of town clerk. We did remove other records that are not specifically listed there, plus the leather bound books with this, it got explicit permission so the, to remove the them temporarily. That's the very last sentence. Right. So we, how, how would you, what would you suggest that that last sentence be changed so that um, um, it doesn't imply that you did anything unlawful? I suggest the other departments also get a chance to review it and to contribute. That's not um, directly. There's not enough space in the vault as it is. So if all town records would, would be moved to the custody. There won't be, there's no way the vault can fill. But that's not what the last sentence says. All it says is any records currently in the possession of any person. She's looking at the old one, not the new one. Oh, oh that's the problem. Okay. Yes, Frank, we're saying? So, okay, the very last, protection and preservation of all town records. All town records which should be maintained by the office of the town clerk are historically significant significant or of vital importance shall remain in the town's fireproof vault under the care of the town clerk. And the town clerk shall follow all state regulations pertaining to said records. Any records currently in the possession of any persons or committees not in accord with this policy must be returned forthwith to the town clerk or appropriate custodian of the records within town offices. 
So it's just saying that if if there's some that you know somebody has that doesn't match with the policy, we need to make sure that, that the town clerk has access to all the pertinent records. And, the and, mere, and, and the mere, the mere, fact, uh, the mere um, fact that town council plagiarized this particular sentence from a particular statute doesn't imply that that particular statute governs the sentence that we're intending to use it in it in that way. Okay, like, I hope it's just so. like. All right. Nobody's um, saying you're unlawful or did anything okay. unlawful. Yes. Um, it's just. All right. That's fine. It just repeats the law. And uh, I'm all for it. We don't want those records in there. So we do want them in the vault and safe and secure. At the time, it, it seemed very dangerous. We could not touch the other. I still, I'm still worried and I hope I'll see the report that says they're very safe now. Right now, I'm worried about those books, old books that are st stacked on the shelves there because of the humidity. I, I know how fast mold can grow. I do not want to, to see them ruined or damaged by water and humidity. I think the main thing here is that everybody is interested in protecting the town records and doing their best to do that. Yes. I think that's like absolutely clear that that's what everybody's focused on. Yeah. So, I'm sure so. the commission will not hold the records hostage. We'll bring them back if, uh, if um, if it's safe, absolutely. We don't need them there. Okay, nobody is there. It's not ours. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just a, a little concerned that the commission will bring them back if it's safe, because that sounds like you, you're kind of like setting up <laughs> some okay. criteria, saying like the vault's not cool. safe, so we're going to keep them upstairs, which is even less secure because it's not fireproof. So I think that's what makes me a little uncomfortable. That okay. and uh, that's a good point. <laughs> it's also accessible to anybody who ever had a key to the gymnasium. It's the same lock, and so we're talking seventy years of. <laughs> um, I was wrong to say politically, but um, but so, at least we know that everybody has access to them. Who <laughs> wants them? But not everybody can just go digging, and that's a good thing. So, what so j I just wanted to clarify that A, we didn't remove the town clerk's actions. B, town clerk has currently access there. Three, as per regulations, per duties of the clerk, explained um, the clerk works with other agents and custodians to fetch them. So, we are happy to do that. And we are we'll bring them back. We need the bins or, or the Ziplocs and the uh, those little packets. And yeah. Yeah. Moisture absorbers. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. we just we want to, to get back in the fireproof and and until until the wall. So this, this is all is. about this is all about getting them in a fireproof location, and yes. that's what all we're right. doing. That's so what, in, that's in your opinion, the risk of fire is worse than the risk of yes. water damage or mold damage. Yes. As currently as as the risk has per currently been explained by the state mold department of health by a quality, qualified person. expert yes. like, and also by the law. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's good enough for me. You know, um, so, I did not so, hear so, from the expert, but uh, you know, if you're saying that's their estimation, that's fine. And you know, he will be generating a report, and we, you know, that, that will be sent to all town committees mm -hmm. and the historic commission, etc. So, I mean. So the language of this policy then that, that you're okay with, we, we're going to adopt and then we're the going to okay, The language of the policy re repeats the, okay. the look. That's so, so already there, already there, and uh, and, and, so, and nobody else, nobody has the key. The historical commission does not have the key to the vault. There's no way we are able to walk in and take anything without unsupervised. That is the whole concept behind the vault. And that, that's been like this for years. Um, and that's why, you know, so that she has regularly scheduled hours and... Um, and there's been numerous times that Sarah has come in and the vault's been opened and she spent many hours researching at that table in there, in with, and out of the vault. With permission? Yes. Okay. If I am there, I am happy. I have always been happy to let you guys get in there to look at things. That's why I'm, I'm not against you researching. I'm just against... Amen. The records being oh, yeah. not in a fireproof vault, and all in the same place. And then, you know, when when the commission meets on Friday, if you have any additions or amendments to the policy, we'll be happy. We'll, we'll be happy to consider them. Yeah. We, we might. I don't know if we do because but we can't. It's pretty straight. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, understand. Understand. And great. And I'm grateful that you took it upon yourself to come here and. Go to bat for the commission. It's cool. Um, all good. All right. That's so. I would also 
you know, I don't know if other departments would have uh, feedback on that policy. They might. They have a chance. To even, even though I was the policy say, seemed many other. Okay, the policy seemed to only involve the records that are in the custody of town clerk, which is fine because. Yeah. We are not doing. That's who's, that's the who's ones that are upstairs are not those. But if again, if other departments turn the records over to the town clerk's office, then they have become, they are now in the custody of the town clerk. They were given to the town clerk's office to keep in this vault under my under the, my office's custody. They don't want them. So, the old select board minutes, they, were, they, they don't want them. They were given to the town clerk's office to keep them as the custodian of the records. The only department that hasn't done that for the most part is the tax collector. And that's because she has her own vault. All right. Um, so may maybe that's why there, it's a good idea to let departments cons consider the language a little bit more. Well, right right now, um, right now none, of the, other, none of the other co commissions outside of minutes which are supposed that fall under me anyway to keep forever none of the other departments really have records and you know and and, and all department heads get the idea they know that this is being discussed there's no, there hasn't been any request for anything this is no secret um so you know we'd like to just sort of um you know motion to move this vote forward right. and I, then i hope they will if they will aware i, I I won't guess how it will affect, for example, the cemetery commission, because I know they keep their records elsewhere, not in the town. I mean, we're not now. we're not creating law. We're just exactly. And go the by only the thing, law. in it's right. very clearly under the town clerk on the retention schedule is deeds to the cemetery plots. Because we kind of get to so. We, um, we have learned how important that is recently. Yes, we learned. Who has the exactly. deeds currently? Yeah, um, that's. <laughs> Um, what, Sorry, uh, yeah, um, so, do, second, do, do, uh, well, let's make a motion, motion. let's make a motion. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so, um, where is this? Okay, I mo make a motion to, um, to authorize Town of Conway select board policy on the maintenance and custody of town records. Effective today, May 6, 2024. Second. Be before you guys do, is would it make any difference? Um, would it make any difference that the time of the meeting is not posted on the bulletin board before for this vote? The time of the meeting. I love the meeting. This one? Just remember. It's posted. Yeah. The, the date is posted, but not the time. That's it. It should say... Um, Actually, it's not. It's on the website, though. But it's not on this particular piece of paper, but I don't think... Really. Yeah, I don't... Oh, was it this one? The printed one. The printed one doesn't show the time, it shows the date. Yeah, but it could be different. No, I believe she took a picture of the picture. one on the I was, board I to took it on the, on the way oh, here okay. because I haven't okay. seen it before. Because we usually print out the one from the website, right? Yeah. No, well, Adam sent me the attachment, so that's what I printed instead of the one from the website. When he sends an attachment, that's the one that goes up. It's your fault, Adam. Again, we're not creating oh, well. policy. We're only staying to stick <coughs> by the Massachusetts general law policy. So my vote is aye. Aye. And aye. It's unanimous. And um, you know, invite invite the comments of the commission and the okay. any any amendments, and we'll consider them as an amendment. Yeah. Okay. In the, meantime, will, sure. in, the, in the meantime, the policy is enacted, and um, yeah, we ask that the records be returned. Be returned. Back, to the Back into the vault. Sure. Um, we'll, uh, I mean, the the assessor's records that Lee let you take that are under her custody. That's they are supposed to be in a fireproof vault, but that's between the historical commission and the 
assessors, the board of assessors. Mm -hmm. If not the assessors, I guess, which ones then are you most concerned about? Um, the annual reports and the leather bound. I well, mean, the assessor's well, well, records, down. she had every right to let you take. Okay. But the, the, the box of annual reports, see, I don't know everything that's up there. I just, when I went in there, okay. the shelves were, you know, I knew your two shelves were empty. But then I knew that the shelf that was marked for the select board, that more than half of that was gone. Oh, no, we didn't touch those. That's there. the leather books that are oh, up there in the closet. Okay. Those, the, those were, yeah. So let me write down the annual reports. What else? Well, maybe, uh, yeah, this is, maybe this is, you yeah. two could work on that. <coughs> yeah. Or, or, or sure. the commission. Yeah, let's but, do that. But, Absolutely. You know, that, um, All those books. And I just wanted the, 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 uh, you know, to thank you. Be, thank you for caring enough to, to, to seriously. really. <laughs> no, no, seriously. No, that like, is true, yeah. Se seriously, people that care what makes the world go round. Yeah. And people that care are, are especially what makes our little corner of the world go round. Um, and so I'm grateful that people care about these things enough to really you know, want things to be just right. And then if you, <coughs> I'll, I'll even go get the box and the silicone pack, sili silica packets, mm -hmm. if you just let me know the size. Yeah, like in, in the plastic There's sealed container. Yeah. Okay. That's why I said I've um, got some empty totes under my desk. Okay. Okay. Um, I hope they'll fit. The ones we have, the commission purchased the archival boxes uh -huh. for our records and they're stored, so they won't fit in them, but they are, they're protected pretty well. Well, those are with, already protected. Yeah. If you yeah. can just get with Lori and let her know the sizes, then Yeah, I well, can. the archival boxes are already it protected is, boxes. Yes. They're, they're already. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, so let's, um, <coughs> would you be able to write me a list? Or I can, or I can I category, I like category. Just, I'd have to go in the closet. Just and talk about it later. Or yeah, okay. I'd, I'd have to later. go up in the closet and separate what needs to come back down. And we've got to move on. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the next is. Sorry, Jimmy. You're all right. The discussion on our annual town meeting notes from last year. See you later. Yeah. Uh, affectionately called the town meeting autopsy meeting um, and uh, now as it as it nears thoughts about the process of our town meeting and how to make it a more enjoyable experience for everyone <laughs> I thought the last one went well where uh, where we um, only read the description once <laughs> and didn't repeat it like that one year. I think it went very, it went a lot uh, smoother last year because of that. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks, Aaliyah. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'll leave this for you. I'll announce that at the end of the meeting. It's going to be a great talk. Yes, please come, everybody. This is going to be a good talk. Oh, I know. I just don't know if it's a Tuesday night, so no. I have baseball complications with a little kid. It will be filmed. It will be recorded. Well, that's fine. So the one thing that we did um, manage to do this year was send the warrant and the warrant light at the same time, which I think is going to make a big difference because people will have that to look at before. Yes. Before. And a lot of people have already looked at it. Yes. So. Agreed. Because it's awful tough. This was brought up to me today. It's awful tough to walk in and there's four or five pieces of literature on your on your seat. Because in real time at town meeting, nobody's reading that literature. They can't. They have no time to process it. So the better, the more time they have pre to process it, that's the real time to get it to them. And we'll know. I'm glad it came out. But we'll really know at pre-town meeting yeah. <laughs> how many people read the warrant. Which, look, let's be realistic. Nobody, you know, everybody glances at the warrant. Nobody really looks at the warrant. But the warrant light is in, you know, jargon people understand, and they'll get, oh, this is about uh, funding for a fire truck, or you know, and that that helps so much. But you know, we, we played around a little with it <clears throat> at the special town meeting. Things that would help, I think, are, like I say, I, I hear the, you know, 
less stuff on people's seats all the time. I understand that. But um, I think in the I can be a little more poignant in the beginning of the meeting and I will, um, I'll need a list, but I, I will introduce, you know, after we open the meeting, I'll introduce the select board, town council, probably Darius Modesto, you know, principals in the room, and I don't have to do them by name, but I can go to the finance committee, you know, town administrator, the funny vice town <coughs> administrator. <laughs> But you, you see, you know, I'll do a little bit of that. And then the, my second note there was housekeeping. Handout explanation if there is handouts. Yeah, I wonder about um, not having anything on the seats and just if people do want to have handouts, put them like right on the tables when people come in so they can grab yeah, them. They they take them, them if they want them. Take them yeah. if they want them. That change not. was made at Special yeah. Town. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've heard a lot of, a lot of comments from seriously not older people that but younger going the only thing you really need there is your warrant <laughs> you know when you walk in it's the least confused you know and i i can't believe i'm hearing it from like 40 year olds i kind of didn't expect that <laughs> but it's a good sign but it's you know that's good but anyway under housekeeping i read handout explanation Instruction for voting electronically. Explanation of how we will proceed with each article. Reading of, explanation, discussion. At that point, the moderator will explain how to be recognized and how to proceed. You know, only your name, not where you live. I think we, we all talked about that. People don't really need to know in this climate, you know, where your house is. It's just, you know, there are people who, you know, they have that look like, I don't want to tell people where I live, which I, I, I find incredible in my lifetime here, but I understand. So anyway, and then they, you know, I will talk to them about how to proceed when called upon, you know, and, and stress that you either have to go to a microphone or if we have runners, the microphone comes to you. Because, you know, I can do that and be as pointed as I want, but you know uh, every other person's going to get up and start talking without a microphone or without identifying. You know, I, I, that's the thing I, I noted that I remind people the most. Who are you? You know, yeah. and they hear the instruction plenty of times, but just, just those little things at the start. And then when I talk about you know, discussion of articles, I'll be very poignant about, hey, you know, article comes up, like you say, article be a red, <coughs> and then there'll be an explanation, because most of them need some little explanation, just say, well, what is this about, right? And it, you know, it helps so much. Now, one thing I thought of, there's 32 articles, right? A lot of times when somebody has a question about an article, you all three start looking at each other like, well, who's gonna, an who's gonna answer this? Maybe some thought should be put into breaking it up to like 10, you know, two people get 11 and one gets 10, and they study a little more on the articles that they may be able to speak with. And you know, that, that's all the, the next, you know, just the little things that, that I jot down long ago. Yeah. You explain it. things very well. <laughs> you have Tell the my wife that. you have well. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but you have the softest voice on microphone of any of you guys. So if you're if the voice if the microphone's not right at you, nobody in the room here is hearing. I may be hearing what you say, but nobody is, and I hear that complaint all the time. He speaks well, I can't hear him. Okay, I'll speak up. So, yeah. I'll speak up. Yeah, a little projection. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Project. <laughs> I'm not a theater coach, but project. But, you know, those little things make all the difference because if people hear your explanation the first time and they're not humming, then things move along mm -hmm. a little better. But, you know, by and large, you do a good job explaining things. But like I say, there's usually this little time where you're all looking at each other like, well, which one of us are gonna talk about it? And you could probably figure that out. Yeah. 
Well, we know and, like capital improvements is going to take the. Right and, and there's also yeah. there's also the past few years has been a need to share a microphone. So some of that is like looking and saying, hey, you know, grabbing the attention, oh, yeah. wherever, wherever the microphone is in front of, like grabbing that person's attention, just to say, you know, pass right. The but I, you know, part of that was just knowing ahead. Oh, in this question, I'm going to be one speed. I'll just bring the microphone over to me. Have we checked to see if the? I, so I was just going to say that. The, we, that's the on, electronic that's on Lori. Yes, yes. They were she checked last time. It first. Um, and I'll, I will be, I will be asking her about that tomorrow. Yeah, that's that's going to be huge. Yeah. Yes, because that you know, that that's the best thing we've done in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. And I mean, there, I do know too that there's a couple things that have already been brought to my attention. The, the, the the very last article is the yes the kids yeah um with this so and um it's in the i don't know but it's in the warrant um yeah and and they it it passed overwhelmingly in sunderland it, it missed by three votes in in deerfield but there was a couple of situations between residents of deerfield and the, the kids that were regrettable um as reported to um, through the school committee, um, so that that was just uh, maybe an extra warning or, or an extra, just you know um, I don't know. The, the, you know, the, the, there's also going to be the, the there's three. So I guess of the three kids, one's from Conway. There's three se three seventh graders that are going to be asking. Seventh for, grade. I believe that's what they are. Fifteen year olds. No, eighth graders. I mean, uh, preach the age of six. They, they, they better be freshmen. Yeah. And they're close to freshmen. Yeah, I think they're. I they're think, twelve when they're in seventh I grade. I think they're fifteen year olds. Um, and one's from Conway, one's from Deerfield, and one's from Sunderland, I believe. And they they each want to, <coughs> they each have a two minute thing that they want to. I don't know. Uh, I understand what you're saying, but it's all it, that all drives off whether people want to allow people from out of town to speak. And that's. You know, that's also always something that the moderator, every, every town d does that differently as well. In Conway, it's always been the moderator that puts that out there for a motion. I usually um, ask early yeah, before yeah. the meeting starts. Yeah. Are we going to allow people from out of town to speak? Yeah. So yeah. I think that might be the way we go to circle that, you know, to to make it not an issue when the time comes up. Because we're, we're pretty good about people from out of town. We don't have a lot of badness. And you know what? They want to speak. They want to speak. Yeah. That's that was the that was the only thing that I just wanted to bring an extra level of attention to, just because um, the, the, we we want people to participate in our democracy well, as they get older, not know, not you, run in terror from it. You um, know, I'm going to be fair. If nothing, else, I'll be in tie dye and be fair. How? <laughs> <laughs> May I, may I ask for, um, because I know I've gotten a lot of feedback, like, to just don't even think about the motions. That'll just be for the select board, right? Don't give people the motions. Mm -hmm. That's a given. Right, yeah. So enough. we'll have the warrant, the warrant light. There'll be a finance committee report. There'll probably be a capital improvements report. And maybe some notes from me on the budget. And that probably would be it for the handouts. Okay, now let me ask you. Well, it doesn't. It, are you going to have on a table? Out, you know, I think the table idea outside is good. Not on. Well, that's what we did at special town meeting. Yes. We did, we haven't put anything on the chair since we got that feedback. Now, now I, I'm just. I, I was thinking even a step ahead of that. If those things are ready by pre-town meeting, uh -huh. is there any way they they can come to pre-town meeting? Just uh, so people will have a couple weeks to regurgitate. The twentieth. The twentieth. It's your next the, left. The twentieth. And, and Kristen did say it's fine for the select board to meet in the library at 6 and then go to pre-town at 7. Yeah, um, I, I actually wanted to have that on a different day, but but just so you wouldn't have to rush your select board meeting. But it just worked out that that was the day I could get, so. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Traditions are good. Yeah. Um, so we'll do our best is all I can say. I don't. I can't speak for that, that's okay. for financing capital. I'll do my best to get. We certainly have the warrant, the warrant light, and I can definitely get those are the two most. Well, and people will be getting those around the fifteenth, sixteenth. <laughs> yeah, well, that's when it'll be mailed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's fourteen, fifteen, sixteen is when. The so hopefully they'll have it by the twenty, but they may not. Yeah. Hey, the fact that the warrant's out. Yeah. And the lights out. Are you kidding? You know we're ahead of the game. Now. 
And it's a good budget. It's a, this is a this is this is a really good time. budget. Yeah. We're on the same schedule Did, we were last time, but people still. Can I say a couple other things I thought went really well last year, um, mainly because of you? Um, uh, I thought it was great that you only allowed one response yes. from one person per article. That's what's going to happen. Tomorrow. That was great. Yes. What I will say is I, I I'm pretty sure we have a high probability of somebody speaking out and talking about. A subject that doesn't pertain to the article. I've heard that, and that we should stop that. I'm, I'm tuned into that. Yeah, I did look at what you sent me. Oh, the 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 webinar on just for yeah polite discourse and yeah yep. yep. Oh, I got it. Yes, but I thought you I thought you did great last year. That went really well. Um, I think that we should plan for a recess too like and just tell people up front that if we're not done by 12 right, we start at 10 yeah we have every right to do if that. we're not done by 12 or 12 30 that we're going to recess for an hour and i was and told then. that to you to be, be sensitive to the fact that there's a number of people that are diabetic that have health concerns that just need to including your moderator yeah, there you go <laughs> we'll bring snacks yes, for you yes. oh no no i bring my own, so I bring my own. <laughs> no but, that, but that, that's the thing that's the thing it just don't you know, um, and the, the other, I, I was also get pe people missed the, the the declarative statement by the moderator saying, "When in doubt, I am the I make the decisions. I am the boss." You know, I, I, I will I, I will never phrase it the way the Nick, former moderator yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, but, but that like that's something that maybe yes might add a little. But I just I, I would never phrase it as that. And did, to clarify, you're saying you're going to give an explanation of each article without an ask for the next explanation? Because typically yeah. you ask if if you need an explanation. No, I'm going to ask for you know I, I when I talk about it, I'm going to explain to them how not each article I'm going to explain to them, but I'm going to explain how we do article one through thirty two. Got it. Meaning, okay. Todd, we you know we hear it, then we. Then I ask for an explanation. Mm -hmm. Then there's discussion. Then then there's you know, then there's a vote. Okay. And so they get that you know because you know I, 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 some of the suggestions from before are great. Some are a little over the top in the fact that I saw one of the suggestions that said at the end of any discussion before we vote, I should lay out for each what a yes means and what a no means mm. and i think if you're there and you're able <laughs> to understand what article we are on and hear the discussion by the end of it you should really have a pretty good idea and, and we did that in, in a lot the of beginning of it the motion the tells you correct. what the yes and the no Co mean. correct so i really don't think i have yeah. to reiterate that yeah. again yeah. at the end because i have complete and total faith that any citizen of Conway can figure it out. Yeah. And we explained it, I mean, Eric we, did an amazing we broke job it out in the, the um, more, more light where it said yes. like a yes oh my God, specifically yes, it, means this. It is dead, you know, the, it is right on in that. And I did hear during town meeting last year, people in the audience saying to each other, read the word light. <laughs> <laughs> it tells you right there. <laughs> Well, the wording, you know, the, you know, I've gone to town meetings my whole life. The wording of the actual Warren article, I understand. People who, you know, if it's their first town meeting or second town, I'm sure they look at that and go, "What does that mean?" Yeah. And I, you know, I understand that. So the the light helps that out. Mm -hmm. But I, I think. Uh, I think all the suggestions here were very good suggestions right now. And we, you know. I'm gonna get a bunch of new people. Yeah. You know, I'm shocked to see the number of, uh, how big our kindergarten class was this year. <laughs> and, uh, and how many of them have moved here from elsewhere. Yes. Um, and how many of them seem to be interested in civic stuff. So I think it's a really good sign. And uh, I think, well, this, I'm, I'm looking this, forward to it. This, I'm not going to lie. This this article two budget is is just really something that I think we up here can be proud of. And uh, I I like, agree. Like 
Even the way, even the way it's broken up. Very nice. And, and <coughs> it is. we are able to take care of the employees in a way that we haven't been able to do in a long time, and still come in under three percent. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a good one. So. Yeah. Anything else? Any? You got anything for me? Um, no, you know, I, I, I think, you know, the, you, they, to me, actually, what this, the pre-town meeting is maybe more nerve-wracking than the town meeting, because the pre-town meeting requires you to know all 30, yeah. and you, 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 it's like a pop quiz where you get, you have a huge book, and you get asked two questions out of the whole book, three. but, but three, but, and you have, but you have to, me like, memorize the whole book, um, you know, at least, the other one, you get to talk about the whole book. So, um, so yeah, it's I, I, you know, I, I'm you know, you know how partial I am to pretend. Yeah, and it, but it does in a way. It clues us in totally. So what's going to be the hot button things? And there's nothing wrong with us going into town meeting, going, okay, this got the most checks. Yeah, people want to talk about this the most because that that helps us be aware of our surroundings and we need to be aware of our surroundings in this climate yeah and you know the only, the only other is um i did get a couple requests that um uh, uh two different people said you should we should have we've never had a not for a long time have we had a select board election with multiple with three candidates oh they'll they'll yeah. They and, all get a couple minutes. Well, yeah, but that um, that there should that an organized candidate forum. We don't have a League of Women Voters and chapter in this town or whatever they call themselves these days. And um, the other towns that have multiple contested elections all have these kinds of events. And who puts them on? Um, it's just different. I think Deerfield. It was the. The, the group that was against the Dollar General store put in a, a, a can, put on a, uh, I forget what they call themselves, but, uh, or maybe they were for the Dollar General, so I don't remember, but um, they put on a candidate for them. And it's they, nice, nice to have contests. Yeah. Although it's, I'm not a big fan of placards, Deerfield's kind of cured me of that. <coughs> yeah. Well. It's okay, did they vote today? They did. It's over at eight o'clock, I believe, and um, yeah, I'm interested to see how that goes because we've worked a lot with Carolyn, and I think we all respect her. But yeah, okay, did good. You're doing good. Leave now? Doing good. Thank you, Jimmy. Oh, I gotta be I gotta be grampy after school tomorrow. Good deal. And they need some rest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you yeah. so much, Jimmy. Thanks. All right. Um, vote to approve the minutes of April 29th. Motion to approve the minutes of April 29th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <coughs> the, the warrants, we um, accounts payable warrant in the amount of $162,465.08, the payroll warrant in the amount of $123,561.84, and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $30,395.26. Um, I've reviewed them on. There's, like, them, there's nothing at all discussion worthy of in any of them. But accounts payable was very boring. Yeah, I'm disappointed. <laughs> um, um, I move to approve the warrants as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings attended by select board members. Anybody? Um, no, it's gone. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was, was, was in the mold remediation meeting on Friday with the State Department of Health uh, guy. It's actually a cool department because they only work for municipalities and they don't charge money. And it's a beautiful thing. So, um, uh, <coughs> and, and the damage with the, the, the thing, it was much, the truth was, Less scary than reality, and I like it when that happens. Um, public comments, there's no more. Uh, remaining new business. Um, discussion and possible vote on increasing fiscal year highway 24 wages to fiscal year 25 highway wages for current employees and for current job advertisements. Veronique. That has to be tabled. Okay. 
on, on advice of town council. Um, it, it can be brought up right after town meeting, but okay, yeah, that is. Um, so we'll say to that. Um, discussion and vote to appoint Jameson Laval, current Votech employee, to be a full time temporary employee from June through the middle of August. I am aware of this and think that it is a good thing. And at a rate of the highway department, it, yes, is, it is, it is for the highway <coughs> department. He's just continuing on um, in his job through the middle of August. <coughs> <coughs> I move that we um, appoint Jamison Laval to a full-time temporary employee from June through August, middle of August. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. The Germain Scholarships, discussion and vote on the Germain Scholarships. Bernie, what, uh, what is the amount? It's, uh, it's right front. Okay. Right. There's, there's eight of them. So that's the um, interest for okay. you, and if you split it up, if you did sixteen hundred, you'd still like wonderful. Even spend I wondered what that was a note for. What so if we did the eighteen hundred? Then we'd spend slightly. I mean, slightly more than. Then you dip this, back into the and we're money. actually this is actually <coughs> more than what we have been giving in oh, okay. recent years. Yeah, I was um, very surprised by that. So it's I think a lot of interest. Last year we had fewer applicants, and I think we gave fifteen hundred, yeah, and, we and, and that was dipping weeks. into the principal. So this is actually. I think we're doing pretty good. Yeah, I think last year we had initially five and then one was added, so we had six total. Yeah, six. it was about, it was six, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we have eight applicants whose uh, applications have been forwarded to us, and although they are public record, we by history and custom we do not name those applicants in this public meeting. So if people really want to find out, they can go to the town hall and find out the names of those applicants and their applications because those are all public record. But um, we have received them, and uh, there are eight applicants. The custom has normally been to, especially when there is sufficient interest income, that to spend the interest that generated over the past year on the germane fund. And um, every once in a while, we have dipped slightly into the principal. But the best way to keep the fund going <coughs> is to not spend from the principal. And um, this year, we're lucky that it, the investments and the investment advice that our town treasurer uh, does at this stuff, she, she really does good sometimes. Some years we get really good years. <coughs> so this is one, the Germain Fund, this year, this past year, in interest, made $13,959. So uh, we can, um, the eight applicants, um, when that is divided, when that total interest income is divided by eight applicants, the number is $1,744.87 per, per successful application. So I would make a motion that we award each of the eight applicants um, at, in our capacity as Jermaine Scholarship Fund Trustees the amount of 13000 I'm sorry, the amount of $1,744.87 representing this year's annual interest of $13,959. Each, each of the eight applicants gets $1,744.87. Oh, okay. You're not going to do the $1,600. Okay. And <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, um, I would just which, make it an even number just because it seems easier to me, but, I mean, we just say $1,745? Yeah, why not? We're going to be a few dollars over. Okay, seventeen forty-four then. <laughs> there we go. There you go. All right, seventeen forty-four. Okay. <laughs> so, motion, motion to amend the previous motion to seventeen forty-four. Right. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. Seventeen forty-four is the amount. Okay. Um, oh wait. Um, items not anticipated 48 hours. T town administrator update. Uh, well, we've covered almost everything. It's, Good. It's a great postcard, but I did want to mention yes. for anybody who's watching and drives on Shelburne Falls Road, which is a lot of us, that we are working to try to replace the we, where the metal plate is. The town is going to be um, highway department is going to be trying to work on uh, replacing. It's a stone culvert that is. <coughs> And we have to jump through a bunch of hoodle, uh, hoodle, hoops or hurdles <laughs> with um, uh, because it's in a primary habitat 
being so close to the South River, so it might take us a little while. When it does happen, which may be May 18th and 19th, if we can get our ducks in a row, um, the road will be closed for the weekend, right on a weekend, so as not to interrupt the school bus traffic because there would not be a good detour during the work, the school week. Um, so as soon as we know something, we'll definitely be putting out information to everybody to try to give everybody the heads up that that weekend might be difficult, or whatever weekend ends up being, will be a difficult travel weekend on Shelburne Falls Road. Okay. Um, select board comments? Uh, maybe next m meeting we can take Jimmy's advice and go over the articles and who wants to take which one. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Now, we did it. Um, announcements. So our next meeting is the, the, an hour before the pre-town meeting at the grammar school at 6 p.m. in the library. And um, before then, there is a wonderful talk on the 14th at the Historical Society Museum on the Conway French flintlock musket that was used in the Revolutionary War by a really cool uh, former historian at the Springfield Armory National Historic Site. That's cool. And um, Saturday the 18th uh, is at the Conway Town Hall at 11 a.m. <coughs> followed by a free lunch at the ball field behind Town Hall to explain the, our MVP project and all the wonderful things that it's going to do. Right, so just so everybody understands, because there won't be a meeting between now and then to record. So at 11 o'clock in the general purpose room right here in Town Hall, there will be a discussion put on that will explain the projects that will be put before town residents to see which ones town residents think make the most sense for trying to alleviate flooding in the downtown. Up to five projects as they'll be presenting. Then we go have lunch in the lower, <coughs> um, under tents in the lower uh, parking lot, and then come back over to the town hall to vote on which are the top two favorite of those um, proposals. And then the team will start working more on that after that. But, so we're going to discussion, lunch, vote. The other thing, too, is that Thursday the 16th from 12 to 2 at the rotunda of the library <coughs> is a countywide meeting here in Conway on uh, all of the all of the people involved in all of the towns, plus county government, plus representatives from the state, on elder affairs. And uh, that is 22, it's, that is, that is a, a free lunch. And then June 1st, of course, 10 a.m. is the town meeting. And 5, 4 p, 5 p.m. is the senior prom. Oh, jeez. Um, she said that didn't you, Erica. And uh, that is also catered for food. And <laughs> beer, we, got, we, we issued the beer and wine license. Do you have to be like 65 to go to that job? Um, 60, but, uh, but, but 60 plus the select board. Oh, you actually mean <laughs> senior prom. Yeah. 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 yeah, the senior, senior yeah, prom. Like, so cute. Isn't it? <laughs> and there's live music, um, which would have been Isaiah, but now it's somebody else. But um, it's live music and... Uh, I think Barbara's son is doing it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and it's, cat it's catered, like, catered food. That's and, pretty neat. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's that's. And with that, um, all of those announcements. It's a busy, busy couple of days coming up. Um, get your couple of days off while you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.